Pray for us to release you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for today is the gospel reading, but we particularly enjoy your attention to parts of verse 6 and verse 7. He has risen, he is not here. He is going before you to gather. This is our text in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. I try to put myself in the sandal, if you will, of the first disciples. And I wonder just what it must have been like. There must have been so many different emotions, so many different thoughts going on. Jesus had said he would rise again, and yet that sounded so strange. They were going to do for Jesus the last earthly thing they could do for him to anoint and care for his body and the tomb. And then they get there, and the tomb is open and empty. Not me to be humorous, but where do you go? And that made me remember a phrase that maybe you grew up with as well. Do you remember when you were in the house and mom sometimes did? But mom would usually say, Where are you going? Who are you going with? Yeah. Well, where are you? That is an Easter question for us. See, that's the question everything. But especially on the Easter, we want to ask, where are you going? That has been the question about human time since our first parents, Adam and Eve, were kicked out of their home in paradise because of their sinful rebellion. Throughout our Roman series, as we look at the second volume of Isaiah's writing, we notice that the children of Israel had wandered and did the wander and then they came back and then they wandered and then they came back and finally they wandered and wandered and didn't come back and they ended up being exiled to Babylon. And while they were there, they were a little homesick, some of them, but there was nothing left at home. Jerusalem was destroyed. So where are you going to go? What are you going to do? Where are you going? That is a question that has really deep meaning for us. Where are you going? Take a look at your life. We have to confess that sometimes we really don't know where we're going, do we? And then there are times when we know where we're going and it's not where we should be going. When we follow those lusts for things, for people, when we follow that desire for whatever is the latest path. When we live duplicitous lives and we live in empty relationships and we seek pleasure or comfort from the things of this world, we seek to fill an eternal hole with something that's temporary. Surely we have all felt that distance from God, the distance that sin created. For sin cannot stand in the presence of just and holy God. And it is not our tendency to flee to him. It is our tendency to run and hide just as our first parents did. It is our tendency to try to cover our sins with silly little leaves, thinking that God will not see. That is our tendency to try and hide from the truth. But God still cries out for you and for me and for every lost soul. Where are you? Where are you going? Maybe you have especially asked that question to the loss of someone very close or dear to you. Maybe it was some other loss in life that caused you great grief or some sort of tragedy that set your mortality before you. Maybe you have been just a little bit forlorn as you think about the many possibilities of where life could go and you wonder what it is that you should do. Maybe it was that latest diagnosis that caused you to fear and feel a little bit alone, even in the midst of other people. Where are you going? It's a question 
It is important to us because this is not our home. Where is our home? Where will we settle? We have an extremely mobile society, but our hearts are mobile as well, aren't they? Maybe we show up in church and we feel accused. That doesn't mean that our hearts are close to God. We can say and do the right things at the right time and have no part in them whatsoever. And it is then, in all of these situations, whenever we feel like those two prodigal sons, we stay home and do what we must do to work the week, or when we take what we have and go off to see the world and experience all kinds of new things, it is then that we must remember where home is. Jesus made his home with us. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us, tabernacled, tented literally, with us. A temporary house, the word was made flesh and tented with us, and he took up residence in the womb of the virgin. And as a toddler, and he was a refugee in Bethlehem, in Egypt, having to flee Bethlehem. He then moved to Nazareth. When the beginning of the three years of ministry came, he moved to Capernaum, a more social hub for ministry, an easier place to reach. And finally, as he was seen over these last three days, he took up residence in a tomb. But only for a short while. It was a borrowed tomb. It was not to be his final resting place. In fact, there was no final rest whatsoever. He was alive. And he continues to see you and me. And on the day when he hands the kingdom over to his heavenly father, and he provides to God all of the children he has washed clean in his blood, here am I, and the children you have given it is then that we with him will indeed enjoy eternal rest. A rest that is a rest of heart. Oh sure, it's our that. We know the peace of Christ and his people. We know our sins are forgiven. We know that the gap between heaven and earth has been bridged in the broken and crucified body of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we know the time has been broken open that we may enjoy a taste of eternity even now by His most glorious resurrection. But where are you going? Is it obvious by your life? Is it a question that you ask yourself each day? That is a question that is important for us to ask. Because it will guide all of our actions, and it will center and focus all of our thoughts. And I'd like to do a quick on what Mom always used to ask, who are you going with? Well, I'm going with the Lord. Well, then where are you going? I'm going home. Home. There's a nice warm feeling about that word, isn't there? There's a nice feeling of belonging and a certain sense of worth and value, a place of refuge, a place of joy, a place of comfort, a place of peace. And that is our hope as we travel with our Lord each day, as we walk with Him through all of the tragedies of this life and all of the things that would cause us perhaps to wander. We hear Him call to us and we come back. And we say, Lord, I am a sinner, and he says, I love you, and you are forgiven. And so where are you going? Going with the Lord. And where are you going? I'm going home. So now I ask you, who are you going with? The Lord. The Lord. Let's do that. Let's be confident in what we're doing right. Who are you going with? The Lord. And there